welcome to 4.2 angle measure. Okay, in your textbook, this section starts on page 121. There's actually a picture of the B Biltmore Mansion. Okay, this is in Asheville, North Carolina and it is geometric genius. There are angles on the exterior where the spiral staircase goes up to the main entrance and there's, let's see, the first four buildings in, let's see, is that right? First four, yeah, and are included in this floor plan that's in the middle of the page 121. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can kind of, there's a sketch that's at the top and I just think that picture just does not do this building any justice so I found a better picture online and you can actually see there's people on the pavement down there that's kind of give you some idea of scale of how humongous this place is I personally have not visited here but my mom has and she says well worth the trip okay but it'll just give you an idea of some spatial perception and you know and just some appreciation of complex architecture is always good. So anyway, just a little stop in North Carolina before we head into the lecture. Okay, so your first postulate is the protractor postulate. For every angle, there is a positive real number that is less than or equal to 180. And this, this is much like our ruler postulate when we had a um, real number when we were measuring segments, right? The ruler postulate said that you can measure any segment. Well, every angle has an associated number of degrees, just as any segment has an associated length. The measure of an angle is the real number that corresponds to that particular angle. Okay, the continuity postulate says that if K is a half plane determined by the line AC, so if you need to go back to some of that vocabulary, the half plane postulate, right, three distinct sets, then for every real number, X is between 0 and 180, there's exactly one ray, AB, that lies in K such that the measure of BAC equals X. Okay, so all of that... <laughs> is really very similar to the completeness postulate that we've already talked about in um, chapter three with segments okay so it guarantees that an angle exists for any measure okay like the completeness postulate guarantees a segment exists for every measure and it shows that circles have no holes okay they're continuous just like the completeness postulate says that segments have no gaps they are complete okay and it is the reverse or later on we're going to talk about it actually is the converse of the protractor postulate okay so the protractor postulate says that every angle has a measure the continuity postulate says every measure has an angle hopefully that helps just just like the completeness postulate and the ruler postulate were converses of one another same thing here Okay, so now certain angles have names, and you're familiar with these probably from elementary school or um, probably even middle school, where you just haven't talked about. We didn't talk about these last year, so we're going to kind of refresh our memory. An acute angle is anything, any angle less than 90 degrees. Okay, so from 0 degrees to 90, a right angle equals 90 exactly. Okay, it's not 89.999, it's not uh, 90. 0.999 okay it's 90.000 forever an obtuse angle is anything more than 90 but less than 180 180 as you know is a straight line and then the straight angle is what they call it here instead of calling it a line it's a straight angle equals exactly 180 degrees okay so congruent angles are angles that have the same measure hopefully that is not shocking to you as it is exactly the same concept as segments having the same measure are congruent. 
Okay, so for example, ABC is 50 degrees, XYZ is 50 degrees, so the measures are equal, therefore the angles are congruent. Okay, and that is the lesson. So for your WISC summary, we're doing something a little bit different. There's two questions. First, express a logical opinion as to why a circle is divided into 360 units for measurement rather than some other number, say, for example, 100. Um, if this will, Google will help you out with this, okay? There's actually two different thought processes here, and I'm okay with either one. You can give me both as well, if you rather. And then the second question, explain what is meant by the word continuous with respect to angle measure. Okay, I went over it, but I want you I want to make sure you really truly understand. So can an angle have a measure of the square root of 353? Yes or no and why? Okay, or why not? And I will see you in class. Oh, and be sure to bring your protractor to class tomorrow. It's really important. We're going to be doing a lot of measuring of angles. So, see you then.